Welcome back. Paul, I don't want to keep talking about the flood situation because we've talked about it a lot, but it's important to actually focus on the fact that there are still people out there who've not yet been able to get back into their homes, mm -hmm. who are still struggling to rebuild. Do you sense a, a shift in attitudes, uh, a kind of a state of affairs where that if, God forbid, we get another flood or another natural disaster of this kind of proportions, that the, the, Gold Coast, the goalposts have kind of been moved yeah. in the way the insurance companies will deal with the situation like this? Look, I, I don't know. I, I would hope so. But what you've got to understand, the emotional tension in the community at the moment. Yeah. Like last weekend, there was, you know, at any time there's rain and a, a, a large amount of rain, my phone and my email, I, am I going to be OK? Am I going to be good? The kids are stressing out because when people have been displaced from their home mm -hmm. and the kids in particular, they don't understand it. They see all their toys out in the footpath. They know that something's happened and it's taken so long. And that's where communities... You know, we can put a lot of money into foreign aid, which is, is needed. But when a natural disaster happens in our country, I think it should be all hands on deck, whether you're insurance company, federal government, state government, local government, or the general public, to get in there and help those people back to where they were because the natural disaster wasn't caused by them. Mm. You know, people say, oh, you ain't covered by insurance. You ain't this. Well, maybe they couldn't afford to. Yep. You know, so, so why are we going to blame them for the natural disaster? Yep. They're just minding their own business, but they've lost everything. Yep. And that's why I'm so determined to make sure everybody gets back. That I don't mean to test, you know, any of the, my funds. Because, you know, like a, a young couple, they brought a, their second property. They mortgaged it. And people say, oh, we're not going to help you with that one because, you know, it's an investment. Mate, they, well, since we're in, in this country, do you get penalised for working hard? Yeah. So you're better off sitting on your backside, doing nothing, and everybody can help you. And, and waiting around for the help to arrive. And th th those young couple have got just as much mortgage on that investment property as anywhere else. And yeah. that was their, their nest egg because they don't want to rely on, on, on pensions and later on in life. So I don't understand it. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. It's my second voucher. There was no paperwork. Everybody said, wow, first time I got money, I didn't have to beg for it. Yeah. Makes a big difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I didn't give out cash, by the way. I gave out vouchers, so they had to spend it in the local area, and it helped the other businesses, and no money went into the poker machines. It's an interesting kind of side angle to this, that political mileage starts to be made by those little, I don't know, press officers or media officers, or people who write speeches and stuff, start looking for chinks in which they can kind of chisel away at whatever's going on. Yeah. Considering that big picture and trying to move forward and trying to help people, be very frustrating for everybody involved in that yeah. to find people pulling it back or just breaking away at those foundations that we're using to rebuild a community. Uh, look, all the way through the floods, I had advisors saying, oh, don't do that, you could get in trouble. Don't yeah. do this, you know, are you following the local? I said, go away. Yeah. I'm doing what's in my heart. Yeah. And, you know, when people say to me, what rule did you follow? There's no rule book. You know, when people have been hurt by a natural disaster, you use natural instinct to save people. It's like Steve Jones up at Gatton, he was in trouble because he drove the trucks through the floodwaters to help people, right? And they crucified him. Mate, so he's a hero. Mate, would you let someone, you know, even though you're, you're risking other people's lives, what would you let the other people die? It, it's human nature to save somebody. You know, and that's why I just don't understand what's happening. You know, like, you know, when the floods hit, I, I didn't go to the local government act and find out what I can do and what I can't do. Mm. I don't really care. I just did what I had to do. And then afterwards, you've got all these people coming out with their inquiries and lawyers and saying, did you do this? Did you do that? I go jump. I yeah. did what I needed to do and I'll do it again. Yeah. Get to, the point, get to the point in your life, you must be getting thinking about retirement, that it's almost too much for you to keep going in, in light of this terrible yeah. tragedy that you're dealing with still on an everyday basis. Yeah, still getting phone calls all the time, people needing help. Yeah, the election's in next March and... Yeah. Um, Made my, I had to give some serious thought and the, this, the factor was am I still enjoying it? Yeah. So whilst I'll tell you about all the, the pressures, every day I wake up and I'm, I've never had so much fun in my life because I'm out there helping people and I'm breaking rules in the best interest of people and I'm breaking down the bureaucracy for people. And Ipswich now is now regarded as one of the best cities in the world. Mm. And there was a, a survey came out this morning uh, where... Um, uh, lifestyle index and we came fourth and we beat places like Brisbane and, and to me that's a great credit tip which are a city that used to be a, a laughing stock and the old um, and there's few people out there those, that 
two-head city joke. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm really pleased about that because it proved to me that we we're twice as smart as everybody else, so it's good. It just fits in with your whole idea, doesn't it, of uh, tucking your chin in yeah. and, and taking it on your jaw and moving forward and fighting a little harder to achieve it. No matter where, no, no mayor should say my city's better than your city. Yeah. No matter where you live in this country, it's your home. And what happens? If you want Queensland to be strong, all the homes have to be strong. Um, Ipswich, whilst we were devastated by the floods, I've got to tell you, we're going to come out as a better city. We've now got a new coal store, we've got all the redevelopment of our CBD, and there's great lots of infrastructure happening, and people are investing in the city. We're the fastest growing area in Australia. But it's not about growth, it's about um, managing growth. And people say to me, why do you work with developers? And I said, I don't, I work with community builders. Hmm. The community builders, you know, without the community builders and developers, there's no plumbers, electricians, carpenters, you name it. So we need them. They're the start of the food chain. You're watching Meet the Ministers. My name is Sean Bindley and my guest on the program this evening is the Mayor of Ipswich, Paul Pazali, and we'll be back. Thank you.